So really, the hot topic of this weekend was the porpoising that seemed to appear for not just Mercedes, although they seem to have it the most, but for lots of teams, really causing them issues, and in particular causing the drivers a lot of back pain. Lewis Hamilton, as well as Daniel Ricciardo and a few other drivers, complained that their backs were hurting and that they were really getting smashed around in the cars to a level that they've not experienced before. And quite a few of you guys wrote in to ask what I thought about that and whether I think something needs to be done about it. So the short answer is, it depends. Now, personally, I'm against any one team being handed an advantage because they've produced an inherently bad car. The porpoising is a problem which seems to have most obviously affected Mercedes, but perhaps that's because they are, they're a team that is in focus. They're at the front of the grid, or certainly one of the teams which should be at the front of the grid, and there's a lot of expectation there, so there's a lot of talk around that team. They're in the spotlight, and we can see their cars bouncing around a lot, and obviously Hamilton's pretty vocal about it. But I also think it's something that's affecting many other teams as well. The point at which I think something needs to be done about it regulation wise is when there's a consensus among the teams that it's actually a danger or a problem that they can all agree that needs to be regulated out of existence it's obvious that this has come along because of this year's regulations and it's something that's particularly difficult to simulate and it's not just a performance problem it's a it's a health issue for the drivers so i'm in two minds about this because mercedes obviously have the option of just driving slower they can potentially set the car up in a way that makes this easier on the driver's bodies, but obviously they'd lose so much performance that's not really realistic. And other teams, like Ferrari, have suffered porpoising but still been able to perform extremely well. So it really comes down for me to whether enough teams can agree that this is a health and safety issue that needs addressing by the governing body, or whether it's something that, unfortunately, Mercedes just have to stick with for the year drive the cars slower and accept the fact that the results won't be as good. The problem you have is that kind of approach very, very rarely works in motorsport. Teams just won't drive slower. The drivers will just drive as fast as they can and they will just get injured if that's the situation. You won't be able to just tell them to slow down in that way. You do need to regulate it because the drivers are just going to push to the point where they get injured. It's the same reason that we legislate for a lot of safety areas in motorsport because Teams, although they would rather the drivers were safe, and drivers, although they would rather they were personally safe, they also are extremely competitive individuals. And if the rules allow you to do something, which is potentially dangerous, but also potentially a big performance gain, we know they're going to do it. We know from experience that that is just naturally what happens. So in some situations, you do have to have the governing body stipulate that certain things are not allowed. Now, there are ways that we could do this that would not necessarily penalise the teams that have managed to do a good job. Red Bull in particular seem to have managed to make an extremely fast car that suffers from very, very little porpoising. So maybe there's potential to mandate a maximum vertical G-force, um, which would mean that it would force some teams, even if it meant slowing the cars down, to avoid allowing the car to bounce like it currently does. And whatever they need to do to do that, maybe that's what they have to do. Alternatively, we could stipulate a minimum ride height that all teams have to stick to to maybe take away some of this effect for everyone, but maybe that's not particularly fair. We could allow the return of some of the older suspension systems, which were more capable of smoothing out the ride and avoiding this problem. There's a few different things we could do, and whether or not I think we should do them personally depends on how many teams agree to this and how many drivers agree. And I don't think you're going to get agreement from the teams that are right at the front. In particular, Red Bull will not agree to anything unless they're absolutely forced to. And why should they?